Hello, Internet. Happy St. Patty's Day, or a couple of days beforehand, whenever I put this up. Uh, it's that magical time of year when um, spirit re reviewers on YouTube stop talking about bourbon for 10 seconds. They put on a green t-shirt, like I've got here, uh, and they talk about Irish whiskey. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to talk about Irish whiskey, not exactly. I'm going to talk about poutine. Um, <laughs> this is, roughly speaking, uh, Irish moonshine. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the pot distilled stuff they would make way up in the mountains to escape from the tax man. Um, so now there is, there is a little bit of controversy uh, about whether you can even, whether legally sold spear of any sort could ever be pochin, um, because by definition it's supposed to be illegal. Um, I don't, you know, that's a debate over definitions and there's no way to res resolve such things, but happily uh, we do get stuff like this in the market. This is, um, uh, yeah, I, I got nothing on that. Um, and I don't think it really matters. I, I, I do hope there are people out there actually making, you know, um, genuine illegal Irish moonshine though. Um, so this pochine is from the Glendala um, distillery. They, they in their marketing, um, uh, they got a, they make a big kind of show of, you know, being far removed from civilization. There's like a guy yelling in a lake with a bird and, and stuff. I think that's actually on the label here. Um, really, I mean, the distillery, the center is uh, about 15, 20 miles south of Dublin. So they're not, they're not as far <laughs> removed as you would think. Most of the lineup is um, source stuff, probably Cooley. I don't really know. Uh, this, I believe, is, is their own. So... Um, Pochine, uh, legally d defined, which I guess is, con could also be a contradiction in terms. Um, you can get, you can have malted barley in there, right? But you can also have other grains. You can have, uh, uh, potatoes in there. Uh, you can have sugar beets in there. Uh, I've talked about sugar beets before, um, about how they sort of change the world of the French Caribbean uh, rum produce, production there. Um, I think the only thing you can have in pochine is like agave and fruits of any kind. So if, you, if you're putting like grapes into your pochine, it doesn't count, but um, the sugar beets are fine. And indeed, this is made with malted barley and uh, some sugar beets. I don't know the proportions or anything like that. Uh, they do say it's, it's triple distilled uh, in a pot still. Um, it is bottled at 55% alcohol. Um, and, uh, yeah, that sounds cool. So let's try it. So totally unaged, basically new make. Um, I think the retail on this is, is around 30, 35 a bottle. And they've a very fun, weird alternative, um, to buying whiskey. Uh, or, or, uh, Irish whiskey for, for St. Patty's Day. So consider it. Um, I also just wanted to do a review of this because all the vid other videos on YouTube of, of Pochin I could find are people like shooting it and making funny faces, which is not useful for the, con <laughs> for the consumer. I don't, it's not even funny. Like, I guess the joke is like, you shouldn't be shooting this. Like it's, it's strong. Is that the joke? I don't really know. Anyways, um, review. Uh, from Wicklow, Ireland. Okay, so um, uh, smells like new make. So we're we're talking um, uh, take take it like a pear. Uh, you know, a pear maybe you left on the counter too long, so it's kind of overripe, maybe rotting a little bit, like an Anjou pear, Anjou an Anjou pear. Um, take that pear. Um, and then imagine at the same time you're like mixing up, making some, some, um, uh, like a potato stew, but the potatoes are all like green and vegetal and really just freshly dug up. You didn't clean the dirt off of them. The dirt is still there. You're stewing all those together and you're just like, eh, I'm going to pop my, my rotting pear into this. That is exactly what this smells like. It smells like green potatoes mixed with sort of, you know, f fermenting anjo pear. Um, it is very kind of boozy sweet. There is a malt liquor note on this. Um, 
And by by malt liquor, I don't mean like 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 malt whiskey. I, I mean like like um, 40s. You know, <laughs> like you go to the corner store. Um, actually, no. Let me back up a little bit. Um, so if if you want, uh, if you're trying to expand your palate and you want to get the tasting notes in your brain of what a very fresh grain distillate looks like, you know, the reason why people age grain distillate or, or try to, um, uh, go to the go to your local corner store and buy some 40s. Buy, um, in particular, buy Steel Reserve, uh, 211, Armed Robbery. Um, this is, okay, there's a lot of Steel Reserve on this, but I'm also getting maybe more St. Ides. St. Ides was always the one that was a little more sweety, funky to me. Um, so buy some Steel Reserve, buy some St. Ides, um, buy some Colt 45. Uh, that's the one that has a very yeasty note. Uh, and you need to get that into vo your vocabulary too. Um, all right, so we're getting Steel Reserve and, and St. Ides. But on, a, on a good day though, that like you're catching, you're, <laughs> you're catching your malt liquor 40s at their best when you nose this. Um, yeah, just straight up like, like malt syrup. Um, you can buy that in, in like a baking supply store. Um, kind of a vegetal like um, root. No, I mean, just, it smells like borscht. There's a borscht note, you know, sort of beet soup with a little sour cream thrown in. Um, more malt liquor. There's a little bit of a, of a floral note, like almost like a cheap hair conditioner kind of thing, like floral hair conditioner. Uh, okay. And that's about it. There's, there's a lot of things going on. It's not, but that's, um, how do I put this? It doesn't all come together. It's very, um, it's very raw as you would expect from something that, um, just came off the still. And, and this is like rum, Spirits, you can drink them straight off the stills. Um, agave spirits, you can do that. Grain spirits tend to need a little bit of time to in, in, in oak or something like that to kind of pull them together, get those, um, you know, Colt 45 um, uh, steel reserve notes out of them. On, uh, on the palate, oh. Okay, it starts out fine. The arrival of the mid palate are fine, and then it gets very uncomfortably kind of boozy sweet, like that that kind of cheap beer, malt liquor, like you know, natty ice Saint Ides kind of character really comes through on the finish. Um, um, overripe pear again. There's a kind of um, something something fruity, like like. Uh, hang on, let me try this one more, more time. Ooh. Yeah, boozy. Um, malt liquor, pear, almost like a pomegranate syrup. Um, like if you made like pomegranate pancake syrup, that's the kind of note I'm getting. Um, a lot of white pepper too. Um, also, like just some some straight up like cigar ash, uh, like cigar ashtray kind of characteristic. Um, like roots, like tree roots. Just pull up a tree root and just chew on it. The green potato thing again, but it's really dominated by those sort of you know, boozy, sweetie, grainy notes, like we're, we're you know, um, St. Ides. Um, no, I mean, um, yeah, St. Ides, Steel Reserve. My favorite was always private stock. So if you can find private stock in your area, buy it. It's great. It's not great, but you know. Um, and that's kind of kind of what we're getting here. Um, I, I I don't hate it. Um, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Um, yeah, let's do four. See what that does.
Now I did have a, another uh, bottle I was going to throw into this tasting beyond the pochin. Um, and then I, after trying it, I kind of decided that it needed deserves its own video. Uh, it is this thing. I'm going to bring it back out in a minute. This is the Whistler 10 year old uh, single malt Irish whiskey crafted by Boan Distillery. Um, crafted does not mean distilled in this case. Um, I will bring this out in in a minute, but uh, I just wanted to note that uh, you know this was something I had in mind, but I'm gonna, I'm going to keep it aside because I think this is this is more fun on its own, um, kind of without without cluttering up the video too much. Let's leave it at that. All right, I'm going to try this again on the nose with a little bit of of water. Um, Okay, so the ashiness I was getting on the palate that wasn't really there on the nose, it's kind of coming through now. So we're getting a little bit of um of like floral, you know, ashtray stuff. Also sweetens up a little more. Um the ashiness is really um kicking up. That sort of you know, take cigar ash, mix it up with the, the floral conditioner thing I was mentioning. That's kind of what I'm getting. Um pear starts to come out a little bit more. Um but so does the, the the beeriness note also comes through. This is more uh, this is more distinctively beery now than it was uh, a minute ago. It's more um, less sort of pure like sweetie booziness and more actual yeah. It could be nosing like a private stock or something right now. Or um, oh, what else is good? Um, what is the one in like the green bottle? I, uh, I can never remember. I can't remember the name of these things anymore. This was years ago. Um, Mickey's, Mickey's. This this is kind of has a Mickey's nose now. Mickey's was one of, was one of the nice ones. Um, a little yeast. So um, we're getting some Colt Forty Five too. Colt Forty Five is the very yeasty one. Um, and kind of a like a baked root vegetable note too. And that's about all. Um, not unpleasant um, on the palate. Oh, yeah. Um, not a lot of development from from before, and it doesn't really go in my favorite direction. More more boozy sweet thing. More malt liquor. Um, and that's kind of about all. Uh, there's some there's some floral notes coming through that weren't really on the palate before. They're there now. Um, I mean, it's fun and different the the this stuff. And um, if you want to show off your nerdiness at a at a St. Patty's party, this is this is a great bottle to go with. It's one of the more available pochines, I think. Um, I'm really not that I've looked around for a ton. Um, but it is, it is also a case for, you know, why new make spirit, um, white dog, uh, grain spirit needs a little bit of time in oak or some kind of something or other to sort of pull it together. Um, and, uh, not, not so much smooth it out, just give it to, you know, give it a point of reference that can kind of pull these, 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 uh, flavors together. And with that in mind, you could, you, you could throw this in oak for, couple years, right? And I think that would actually improve it. Or you could just take your Whistler 10 year old. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add. I found if I add about, if I make it about 25% uh, Whistler, um, this works pretty well. So this is basically, I, haven't, I didn't talk about this as much. This is basically a, a sherry bomb, um, Oloroso bomb, um, without a whole lot of distillate character left in it. It's not really my thing, although it's it's pretty good for what it is. Um, and it's, it's a great contrast to this, right? Which is all spirit, no oak whatsoever. Um, so what I, all I've done is I poured a tiny, tiny portion of, uh, of my sherry bomb, um, my heavily woody uh, Irish whiskey into my Irish new wake, new make. Um, and the result of that The nose is, is quieted down, actually, like the, a lot of those boozy notes have receded. Um, still very malty. I'm still getting some pear. Um, 
maybe a little potato too. And the Oloroso is from the um, from the Whistler is certainly coming through. But overall, the, the nose is quieted down after I added a little bit of um, of, of, of mixing spirit. On the palate, instantly better. I mean, this just jumped up about at least like eight points or so. This is so. Oh, did I even give this a score? I'm sorry, I'm terrible. Um, for me, this is like a seventy-three out of a hundred. Which, um, considering it's basically Moonshine, is, is pretty decent. Um, 73 out of 100 on its own. Um, this is like kind of low 80s at the minimum, which, which just shows you how little you have to do to take something that is, has tons of character, but just needs some kind of extra dimension to it and kind of give it something with that extra dimension. Yeah, the, the nose is coming through now. There's a little floral note coming through, which is actually quite nice. Balancing off against the uh, the sherryness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Um, ooh, I honestly might, might like that better than I like either of those bottles on their own. Um, yeah, so I mean, like it, it's uh, what you've what you've done is less sort of mix these two is use the sort of Oloroso influence to kind of give all everything going on in here something to push off against. You know, something, um, a point of reference by which all those flavors can kind of coalesce, coalesce around. Uh, and it works. Um, so if, if you got a bottle of this, you bought it, you know, um, when it first came out because Puccine, why not? Um, and you're, you're, you're stuck with this and you're wondering what to do with it, honestly, just mix it about mix about a quarter's worth of uh, of other whiskey in there, and you will be shocked how well this comes together. Um, anyways, uh, that's my review. Let me one try one more try of this. Yeah, apple, pear, a little bit of a porridge note coming through now. Definitely the oloroso kind of poking through. It's kind of married with the with cigar ash note very nicely. Yeah, this is good. I like this. Um, anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Uh, 73 on its own. This, I don't even know. I would have to give it more time. Um, somewhere in the low 80s. Um, low, even, maybe even edging into the mid 80s. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, cheers.